This is part four of a introductory series to the Arduino using the Edigu Most Complete Starter Kit. Today we're going to be looking at lessons eight and nine concerning the tilt ball switch and the servo motor. Looking here at the tilt ball example, all that we need is the Arduino itself and the switch and a couple of wires. The switch itself is very simply a, a cylinder with a small ball bearing in it. If you rattle the device, you can hear the ball bearing move inside. When it gets to the end where the two legs come out, the contacts, it shorts them out and acts as a switch. This can be used to detect movement, motion and inclination as it says here. So very simply we're going to be hooking the switch up between D2 and ground. This is how it will look. We simply have to load the necessary code from the examples folder and when we tilt the switch the onboard LED should turn on and off. Let's see how that works in reality. This is the tilt ball switch provided in the kit and you can see the gold colored wires coming out. Do not confuse that with a capacitor. They are a similar size and color, but clearly the capacitor is marked with the minus sign and the legs are silver. As with LEDs, the positive lead is longer, so don't get those confused. We simply hook up our device. It doesn't matter which way around it goes. Connect our Arduino. Upload the sketch now. The sketch should be running. And indeed, as we tilt the switch, we can see the onboard LED going on and off. Clearly, in this orientation, the ball is making contact with the bottom there. As it rolls away, the light goes out. So very simple, but uh, very effective. It's used in many toys and similar projects. Looking now at the servo example, all that we need is the Arduino again and the servo and some wires, so nothing particularly difficult there. What a servo motor is, is a motor that is controlled by pulses that will come from the Arduino, and those pulses will be interpreted by the servo as a position. We can set the position of the servo according to the pulses provided to it. Servo motors are what are used in all radio controlled models, boats, planes, etc., to set the position of the various control surfaces. We have the component introduction in the documentation, which gives us all the specifications should you need more detail. Connection is quite simple. We only have five volts and ground and the pulse wire, which is connected to the pulse width modulation outputs on D9. Here we can see the breadboard layout. All that is needed to do, as always, is to upload the sketch. Note that in this example, when we look at the sketch, there is an include for the servo library. Don't forget to install that first, otherwise the sketch will produce an error. Eligu have been very efficient and provided the servo zip file there to include in your libraries. If you're unsure how to do that, check out my previous part three video where we go through the same procedure. Let's look at that in reality. I've already uploaded the sketch to the board. Now when we power it up, we see the servo motor going through a series of 90 degree movements. So I know what you're thinking. What would happen if we attached the ball tilt switch to the servo arm? Hmm, I wonder. Here I've combined the two lessons. We have the servo motor now with the tilt switch on one of the actuator arms. I've modified the code such that when the tilt switch is activated, it'll try and turn it through 180 degrees. As it tries to turn, it should break the contact. So this will be Interesting to see what happens. Fascinating. It's amazing what you can do. 